Hey everybody, David Chang here. And in this lesson, I want to talk about the five P's of your purpose or your profession. I want to talk about how you can change your life, especially if you're not aligned with these five P's. I've been in different industries. I've been in many different leadership positions. And especially when mentoring the youth, the teenagers, even those starting off in their careers, one of the top questions they always ask me is, how do I know what my purpose in life is? How do I know what profession I'm in? And, and one quick thing to note, for millennials who were born from 1977 to 1997, on average are in their jobs two to three years. So that means they're going to have 15 on average different careers over their lifetimes. And for those that even in the baby boomers generation, no longer do you stick in, stay in one job, stick it out for 30 years, you retire from it. Even those, you know, older in their 40s and 50s, and even those in the 60s are staying in jobs three to five years. And it's one of those things where I think finding out your purpose and the profession you were meant to be in is not limited to a stage in life. I think it's everybody who has to consistently come back to, uh, you know, evaluate, am I doing what I was meant to do? And if I'm not, right, why not? And if I do, how can I move in that direction? And I know this for a fact because I've been there and I've helped others. When you actually, you know, learn, okay, this is what my, what I was meant to do, and you actually start doing it, it changes your life. You love waking up. You love doing what you do. And I think that's so critical in life because life is short. Yes, it's 90 years, you know, many people are living to that age, but if you think about it, time is something that you can never get back. You can get more money, you can get more friends, you can get more things, but time is something you can't. That's why I think regardless of what age, you want to immediately evaluate to see if it meets your five piece. So we'll kind of delve into that. You could download the workbook, and in the workbook I have laid them all out, and also ask some questions and some lists that you want to do. And on one of the pages, I have these five circles. And the purpose of it is the circles intersect in the middle where they intersect is what you want to do. So I'm going to draw these five circles. And I am not very good at doing this at times. So let's see how I can do it. And you can follow along with me as well on how you know these circles look. And I'm a very visual person, um, and so, you know, I use these types of uh, kind of illustrations to help me see things a little bit better. Okay, these aren't turning out as well as I like, but so we can go along with it. I wonder if yours is better. If yours is better, go ahead and send it to me. I wanna, I'm curious to know. Freehand it, though. You can't copy it. I'm not a very good artist, so this looks pretty terrible, but we'll go ahead and go along with it. So let's look at the first P. And the first P is your personality. And I think finding a profession and your purpose in life really has to fit your personality. And what I mean by fitting your personality, uh, there are a lot of personality tests that are out there. You could take the Myers-Briggs. It's on uh, the theartofthinkingsmart.com and I have it on the check sheet that you can uh, check it out on. And when you go through it, that one, Myers-Briggs is a uh, one of the most popular ones. There's plenty else out there. I've probably taken no fewer than a dozen different types. And the big thing about personality tests, you know, 70 to 80 percent correct. And as time goes on, you mature in some ways and you figure out as you're, you know, kind of going through life, experiencing things, it may change a little bit. But there are certain things that uh, the, 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 there's eight different concepts when we look at personalities and you have it in the in the check sheet one of them being you know are you spontaneous or, you know spontaneous or are you fixed determined another one are you outgoing or are you reserved uh, are you somebody who's dependent on others or are you someone who's independent so i've written those down on the checklist and the biggest thing if you look at those personalities now if you the myers briggs is 16 different types of characteristics, and you take the test and it gives you four letters, right? I'm an ENTJ, um, extrovert, intuitive, all right? So it, you can kind of go through those. 
And what's fascinating about those, even, you know, I wouldn't say put every, you know, put every trust into that. It, it gives you a lot of insight that you may not have known about. Your strengths, your weaknesses, and the one that you could take goes into detail of some of the, uh, the recommendations of what you should do and how you should approach things, how you are with people, how do you make decisions, all that type of things. And, and the reason personality, and I'm going to give just kind of an example. So as I mentioned, I am an ENTJ, and I will kind of just use one of them, extrovert. I am an extrovert, big time, as you can tell already. My wife, on the other hand, is an introvert, right? So we actually make a pretty decent balance, I think, in, in, in that case. And looking at your purpose and profession, as an extrovert, I like being around people. And I am more energized when I'm with people, whereas introverts, they're energized by being alone and other people can drain them significantly. Uh, my wife is very good with other people. So it's not your either extreme. You can be both, right? Some people are, some days I'm an extrovert, some days I'm an introvert. That's okay because a lot of people are like that. But looking about your personality, if you're seeing an extrovert and you put me in a small cubicle with 30 other people by myself, you know, take out the people by myself, and I am supposed to work on these spreadsheets for 10 hours a day with no human interaction, I'll go crazy, right? That's something that I cannot do because it doesn't fit my personality. And let's look at somebody who's an introvert that doesn't like, you know, being with a group of people or, or you know, interacting with a lot. They prefer to just get their work done and we put them in a sales position that requires them to cold call, that requires them to really be outgoing to convince people to buy whatever they're selling. An introvert may not fit into that category. And the reason that's so important is when you find your profession and your purpose, it fits your personality. That's the biggest thing to note is that you want it to fit your personality or you're just not going to be happy or you're going to be miserable in, in many cases. And I'll talk about it a little bit in the other preeminent, but they have done studies showing that if you do what is catered to your personality, you're going to enjoy it. You're going to be significantly better at it than somebody who's not. It's just one of those natural talents and abilities that we have. So personality has a very big, uh, you know, a very big portion of what, you know, profession and purpose we are. And I always say this because people, you know, when, you look up to somebody, or uh, especially if you're young and impressionable, you're trying to adapt your personality to meet somebody's standards to get their approval. And I say that's actually one of the worst things that you can do. The right personality is your personality. It's not somebody else's personality. It's not something that you need to change dramatically. The right personality is your personality, and I believe your job is to make your personality better the way you were meant to be. And I, you know, uh, uh, my faith is important to me, and I believe that we are all created uh, the way we were meant to be created, and I think personality is part of it. The second P that we have here is your passion. And I think passion is important, so on one of the circles here, and the way the circles work, as you can kind of see one, one circle, and, and what I'd like you to do in going through all of this is you could do the circle or outside of it is write down you know elements so we got we're going to write down stuff about our personality things that we like things that we're good at don't like on your passion right kind of do the same thing and and you can get the hint that what i'm trying to do is if you write things down on the five different types of p's where they intersect is what you want to pursue because it's truly aligned so when we look at your passion and i had a mentor who taught me that how do you know if you're doing what you're passionate about? And he said, is you feel guilty for being paid because you love doing it so much you would do it for free anyway. I love helping people in this way, doing finances. You know, I'm a keynote speaker at an event. I did a TV interview um, today. I did many other things, uh, you know, uh, different, you know, groups. Uh, and every two, three weeks, and I love doing it. And you know, the awesome thing is, is I get paid to do that. And it's just almost as though when I get a pay, when I get the check, I'm like, oh, you know what? I would have done this for free, but you know what I mean. I, but I, I have so many of those that eventually I do have to prioritize and 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 have to, you know, uh, um, 
uh, make sure that I'm adding value, but at the same time, I can continue to live out my profession um, by feeding my family in, in that regard. So the passion is, is, what does you love to do? What is it that, you know, it, it, another way I look at passion is, you know how when you do something you love, time just flies by. You're like, oh my goodness, where did time go? But if somebody else had to do that same thing, right? So for example, I love finances. So when I look at company stocks, when I look at, you know, reading news on things, time flies by. But if you have somebody who doesn't like that, is not passionate, it's almost as though they're watching paint dry. It's so painful, right? So you know what I mean. So your passion is something that you love to do, right? You love doing it. And, and why this is so important, especially for entrepreneurs and somebody who's, you know, pursuing your own business or starting one, is it's going to be long hours at times. It's going to be something you have to be fully committed. And if you hate doing it, it's not going to work out. And that's why sometimes if people do things just for the money, they're the first to go when things get tough. But if you love doing something and it fits your personality too, and things get tough, you can work through it. All right, let's look at the third P. The third P is preeminence. Preeminence or preeminent, however you want to say it. And this is something that you're good at, right? that you do well. This is something where people know, oh, you know what, if you need this done, you go see you, right? Or it's something where, you know, as a childhood, oh wow, you're gifted, you're talented in this. And I'll give you a typical example of why this is so important. I love sports. I love football, college football, NFL football. I think if it's my personality, I think I could be very good for the cameras on the post-game shows, pre-game shows. And I think I have the wherewithal being in the military to, to do things under pressure very well. I'm passionate about it because I love doing it. I love studying plays and everything. But am I preeminent at it? Absolutely not. Right? If you, I, I, no position I could fill and do anything. And what if I told my family, hey, I'm quitting everything I'm doing. I'm going to try to try out for the NFL. People would laugh at me, right? That is something you want to make sure that it's something you're good at, especially because competition is fierce. And the marketplace, the workplace, is no longer what it used to be. You know, right now it's 2014, and studies have shown that Americans are worth a third less than they were in 2007. Now, if you look at the numbers of jobs, it also says that we have the same number of jobs as we did back in 2007. But there's a problem. The 4 million jobs that we've gained since then, roughly, are not high-paying full-time jobs, but they're part-time temporary jobs that are low-paying. That's a problem. And because it's a problem, in order for you to get a good job, you're going to have to meet up with more competition, especially if you don't have the experience and expertise yet, yet being the keyword that you can do it. But if you open up a business and something that you're good in, that you're better than somebody else, no matter how the competition comes, you're going to win out over the end because you're better than them. So you want to do something that matches your personality, something that you love doing, and something that you're good at, right? You can get my drift. Now, if you could think of just even these three things that kind of get you excited. If I could have the perfect job, what would it be? And I really believe that each of us were meant to make a difference in this world. And I see a lot of people who I don't think are doing what they can. They're meeting the potentials. They're miserable sometimes when they get up. They're working paycheck to paycheck. They're just kind of angry all the time. Is because they're not living to their five Ps. Okay, number four, profitable. Now this one is not the most important one, but it has the potential to preempt everything else, right? Why? Because you could have a job that's great for your personality, you love it, love doing, you're good at doing it, but you're not making any money. So regardless, even if you're in a nonprofit, your nonprofit has to survive. Even if it's something where you know you're doing charitable work, you still have to feed yourself, you still have to eat, especially if you have a family. I, I think that you know, regardless if you're the breadwinner or not, we need to provide for the well-being of ourselves and our family because I think us being a burden to others, having to always scrounge for food, money, I think that's not the way to live. That's not the purpose that we are here. We are, I believe, here not to take from others but to give. So profitable means you're in a job or a purpose. If you're a business person, you're in a profession, that you're able to make money and it may not be a lot for some people who are you know who do a lot of great charity work overseas they do it because of these three things up here 
but they are able to make enough to get by, that's great because I believe it is better to be in a job that you're the, made to be in, that fits your personality, passion in, that you're really good at. And if money, you know, isn't there as much, you know what, there could be other ways of doing it. But if people only look at the profit and they don't look at the other three, those people aren't wealthy, right? Because wealthy is coming from a place of abundance. Wealthy means to be truly alive. And I know a lot of wealthy people that are just unhappy, unmiserable. And I know a lot of people who don't have money, but they're very happy because they do these three things. And guess what? When John D. Rockefeller died, he was one of the richest people to ever have lived, right? When he died, somebody asked, how much did he leave behind? And another person said, he left all of it behind. So the moral of that story is, obviously, you can't take everything with you when you depart this world. And I, having, you know, been through so much in my life, becoming a millionaire, losing it all, crawling my way back again, helping other bec people become wealthy, financially independent, being in so many different leadership positions and, and industries like that, what I have seen is that, you know, if people live the life they were meant to, and may not become as wealthy as they wanted to, that far surpasses, you know, almost in every case that I've seen, people who make so much money but are just unhappy with what they have done. And that's why, you know, profitable is important, but having a balance is even better. So, kind of going back to our little, you know, drawing here uh, that we have, or in my case, you know, more like chicken scratch and everything like that. We looked at preeminent, and preeminent is right, you know, list stuff down that you are good at. So, you know, list things that, uh, that, that you do well. On the profitable side, what, and, and this is a very good exercise for those who are looking to start their own business. And I've put this in uh, part of my ebook, some of the information, exclusive information that, uh, that, that people can get on starting a business. And, uh, and, and, and I really teach this to a lot of people. So it's out there. And, and I hope that people really do uh, take heed of it. Is let's just say you found something that fits your personality, that you love doing, that you're really good at. Is there a way you can monetize that? So let's just take example. Right, this is a kind of a silly example, but my favorite sport to play is table tennis. I was actually trained by members of the Korean national team, and I also did a lot of martial arts going up, typical you know, Asian, right? I did musical instruments too, so there's a lot of things that I really enjoy doing and stuff like that. And so table tennis, if it's, you could fit your personality, athlete, I think that means you, you really are able to see things through, work very, very hard, passion, you love doing it, training and everything like that. You're good at it, let's just say. Uh, I'm more of an amateur. Uh, I don't think I'd be close to professional level, but you know, I did uh, uh, win some tournaments and stuff like that. Profitable, I mean, playing table tennis is not a profitable thing. There isn't a, a big circuit here like there is actually in China, right? That's almost their national sport in Asia and stuff like that. But maybe it's setting up an online store, selling products online, or, you know, getting involved with, you know, foreign Asia products coming in and maybe U.S. products going out, import, export on that. Maybe it's even making products that you could sell or something that, you know, we can just do some video like I'm doing now, teaching some classes online and for those that are more serious, you know, baseball, basement table tennis want to play, shoot a couple of videos and sell it. I'm just giving you some examples. They are silly examples, but there are things that you could think outside of the box as opposed to just saying, I'm going to this job. I picked it because my parents wanted me to do it or it was my college major. By the way, the college major thing, you pick it when you're 19, 20, maybe 18, 17 at times. And really, you haven't lived life yet. So it's difficult. You're choosing what you want to do. But just because you majored in it doesn't mean you should, you know, you have to be in that box. So the biggest thing is, is that, you know, and even if you work in a company, that's what I call an intrapreneur. Let's say you work at a company and you, there's this thing that you're passionate about that the company's not necessarily doing, but it could fit, right? It could fit what you present to the board. Here are some ways of being entrepreneurial within the company to innovate. That's how Gmail was formed. People don't know that. And even LinkedIn, what they do is they, you know, encourage their uh, workers 
every quarter to present to the leadership a brand new idea that they can be entrepreneurial on because they understand that is how innovation happens are these ideas and and you know I'm I'm a big Gmail user and everything like that so just imagine if Gmail wasn't there but that was you know figured out by somebody who is an entrepreneur within Google itself so what what you want to do is look at ways of monetizing these types of things as part of your purpose and part of helping others in your profession even if it's a sidepreneur you're in a job you don't want to leave it you may not like it you may you know not hate it but it's just a job but maybe on the side you know being balanced with time with family friends and everything time to sleep work out exercise is very important you know that's one of the things that you can do on the side couple hours a week of pursuing something else that really kind of able to release but, you know we as human beings uh, you have to have that uh, sense of connection with people, have a sense of purpose in life. That's the way we were meant to be. And that's why some people are so passionate. They love what they do. Some people are just are not because they haven't found that yet. And may, maybe you may be scared to do it because, well, you know, I, I don't want to lose this job, this good income or something like that. So maybe something that you do on the side. And if it takes off, great. And one of my favorite stories, Colonel Sanders, Kentucky Fried Chicken, right? My wife and I, we enjoy KFC. And it was a guy in his 60s. He was in his mid-60s. He failed at multiple chicken, you know, businesses that he had, but he still had his original recipe. So he started again, and boom, KFC was born. It's someone in his mid-60s. So there is a lot of opportunity that people have that they just do not pursue and they can. But again, you want to make sure it fits your personality, passion that you have, you're good, you're preeminent about it, and you're profitable. And then let's come to my last one, five. This is what I call pleasing. Now, this is not what I mean, and my handwriting has always been terrible, so I'm writing this down, pleasing. And, you know, um, let's write up notes here for me. is profitable, monetized, right, preeminent, you're good at, passion, love, personality, um, the different types, so I'm writing this on the board right now. And when you look at the last one, pleasing, what do I mean by that? Is it pleasing to you? No, not really. And and this is where I think a lot of people, uh, it, it, some, some people may look at the first four, and I've seen them even do maybe three of the four. I haven't seen the fifth one, but to me it's very important. It's pleasing to your faith, your values, your belief system. For me, you know, as I mentioned before, my faith is important to me. So number five to me is pleasing to God. And in this sense is, am I doing something that, you know, I was meant and created to do in that sense? For others, it may just be, here are my, maybe ideology. This is my ideology in life, and I want to fit into that ideology because that's, you know, what is important to them. Uh, belief systems, your principles, your morals, all of that I think is very important because you know, I think success a lot of the times, and, and we all have to look at it, a lot of it is, you know, regardless of where we are, we're showing some leadership, and leadership is very um, interrelated with ethics. So I think all of these are very, very important that we look at. And when we see a lot of successful people out there, um, and, you know, I'm not going to name names, but very recently, people with a shot to the top, or top generals, top politicians, top business people, and they had a moral lapse. And that moral lapse, that ethical issue that they had to overcome, unfortunately derailed their career. And it's something that, you know, for me, uh, one of them, uh, you know, uh, was a West Point graduate, uh, four-star general, you can kind of name the names, and he was forced to get out of as head of the CIA. Uh, I'll just say it's General Petraeus. And he's someone that I know, uh, I mean, he, I don't think he knows me, but I mean, I met before because I'm a West Pointer and everything like that. He's someone I still very much respect. And I think he could have done so much for our CIA. I'm an intelligence officer in the military, and I know some of the issues that we're dealing with internally. There's almost 16, I think 19 different intelligence agencies, NSA, Air Force, Army, Navy. There's 19 of us, 16, I forgot what the number was, but there's a lot. And it's, it's a matter of having good leadership to unite us. And really, after the wars in the Middle East, now we're you know, pivoting to the Pacific, Snowden's issues and all that. Coming back to it, I digressed a little bit. 
But I really believe that uh, he had so much more to offer. And like him, there are a lot of people that can offer so much in this world, but because they have these, you know, lapses with the principles, they're not doing things pleasing to what would be their belief systems, and they falter. And I have found that in leadership, once you lose that moral authority, it is very, very difficult to gain it back. In fact, I don't think you'll ever recover from a big one. You may recover somewhat, and, and I think that we always need to give people second chances and everything. But it's just one of those things that you just got, ah, man, it, it, unfortunately, everything went well, but it was just that one thing. So part of knowing your mission and purpose, and we're coming back to this, you know, pleasing to your beliefs, you know, and faith. It, it's not something that happens just once. Like, you you know, you have a check sheet, and just say you filled it out, you find out where it intersects. So, you know, profitable, I'm going back up to my little board here, I'm writing it out. So, personality, passion, preeminent, profitable, and then pleasing. And you're going to write things out. So, for your personality, we talked about, you're going to write about all the things that, you know, matches your personality. Then for passion, things that you love to do, preeminent, things that you're good at, profitable ways you can monetize, or even if you're a nonprofit, you know, and I've worked with a lot of nonprofits, a lot of times they're always trying to raise money just to do their mission, right? Their goals. So it's figuring out ways that you could fund, fund your future. That's the thing very important is, is you know, you want to fund your future, you want to fund your dreams, and that's part of profitability. And pleasing is, is what I'm doing currently or what I want to do, again, pleasing it, it, to your faith. And it's coming back to it on a quarterly, yearly basis. As we mature, as the environment changes, as the market conditions change, our skill set changes, these five Ps will change as well. And, and that's okay. You know what? In fact, it should change because it shows that we're growing. But what we want to do is we want to align ourselves. And that's kind of the big thing I want to, you know, stress is alignment. And alignment is the sense that you're calibrating towards this. Is It's always easy, and I do this a lot, is you veer off track. You just kind of get sidetracked a little bit. Something's fun here. And, and you just kind of, it's a slippery slope, little by little. And then you kind of have to stop and say, whoa, let me figure this out here. Am I aligned with my five Ps? And if I'm not, how do I get back? And, um, and I think that no matter where you are in your life situation, and, and I don't know, uh, kind of your particular situation, and you may be thinking, there's no way that I could do this, I'm stuck. If you have a few minutes left in the day, extra, you could start doing this, and little by little, just building at it. It's building kind of more or less time to concentrate on this, focus on this. And then, when things are clear, it's just to start planning, strategizing. This thing doesn't happen overnight. And I also recommend that you do this by yourself, but also with a partner, a best friend, your spouse. And the reason being is that sometimes, especially I found on a preeminence and personality, we have a different mindset than what it is. And this is true. I think of myself in this way, but I know my wife thinks of me in the other way. It's somewhere in between the middle, right? And, and that's something that we have to be honest with ourselves about. If we're not honest with us, if we're preeminent, we're writing all this stuff that's really not true, we're only doing ourselves a disservice. So your partner, spouse, best friend, you know, business associate who's honest with you can be able to say, well, I know you think you're good at this, but actually you're not, but you're actually good at this. And that kind of opens your eyes and say, oh, you know what? I did not know that. So that's why I think it's a healthy exercise to kind of go through this with your, by yourself, with others, and do this on a regular basis. And when you have that alignment, and you have what you know you can calibrate towards, this, this intersection here. So I'll star the, where the circles intersect, kind of just on the check sheet, and coming back out. What is this that you want to do? And, and I'll just look at myself, my personality, ENTJ. I'm an extrovert guy. I'm a very, very hard charger. Um, they said that Richard Branson is, you know, I think is a type T which were very risk takers. I have very much a similar personality to him. That's why 
you know, I start businesses all the time because I love doing that stuff. I, I kind of thrive on the risk. That's my personality. I love meeting people, passion, things that I love to do. I, I love to help people. I, I love to create things out of nowhere. Um, you know, Jeff Walker, he's a famous person that does these product launches and he calls it um, um, being an alchemist where you're creating something out of nothing. I love doing that. that my passion is creating this program, the art of smart money, art of thinking smart. Even my, my companies, is somebody creating something out of nothing. I love doing that. I love putting pieces together, interacting, finding out how things work. I'm a very curious person, preeminent. So far, I've been good at following through on a lot of the things that I have and adjusting. Uh, everything that I planned from the beginning has, in fact, if you told me 10 years ago this is where I'd be, I'd be like, no way. You know, some good, some bad, but part of, I think, uh, uh, my personality, what I'm good at, I'm being able to adjust quickly, execute speed of implementation, and then see it through to the very end and make sure that I over-promise, or I'm sorry, under-promise but over-deliver. That's something that um, very, very important to me. Profitable, you know, in the business industry, I get dozens of business ideas that come across my desk. Some of them I look at, is it something that's profitable? Can I scale? That's one thing of profitability if you're in a business and, and, and your goal is to grow, you got to scale, which means it grows beyond you and with little money or effort once you hit that center of mass, right? That center of gravity, uh, which we call it. And then again, pleasing. Am I doing things according to my faith? That's pleasing to God. And, and, and that means I'm being ethical. Uh, you know, I'm doing things according to the law. I'm doing things according to, uh, you know, again, my faith and, and, and teachings and stuff like that. So that's just kind of an example for me. Okay. So now that we've gone over these five P's, I really do hope that it's something that you can instantly um, start going over and work on to change your life if you're not doing this. I always love testimonials and success stories. Uh, I would greatly appreciate it if below in the comment section or if you shoot an email at info at artofthinkysmart.com or even if you go on to our member form, if you are a smart member, um, and if you want to learn more about it, you can go to artofthinkysmart.com slash join. And it would be great to have you go through your five Ps, share it with us, some things that you learned, some things you want to add, or some things that uh, uh, you, if you're confused with, asking questions, I'll be glad to interact with you. And really, this is about, you know, more people living the life they were meant to be. And just imagine... I think we have 6 billion people in this world. If every person, regardless of where you are at, to what economic condition you are in, really go do these five Ps, just imagine that the world, I truly believe, will be a much better place. And I actually look forward to it and hope that uh, we are able to do that. Thanks so much for listening in, and I look forward to working with you and, and, and going over some other great stuff that I have coming out soon. Thanks.